everyone and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. So I've had a lot of people ask me over the years and more recently as well and I see it a lot asked in groups, colouring groups, places like that. How do you choose your colours and how do you know which colours blend together nicely? How do you get from one colour to another, especially, you know, colours that really aren't close to each other in shade at all? So I'm hoping that this video will clear that up a little bit for you. Now, before you do watch this video, I'd really recommend you going to watch my Understanding the Colour Wheel video, which I'm going to link in the description below. Um, that is a more in-depth view and explanation of the colour wheel and how it works and that will really really help you in deciding how to choose your colours. Today we're going to be talking about a few of the different projects that I've done and how I chose the colours for them and hopefully that will give you a more of an insight into how to choose your own colours but I have printed off a colour wheel here because I've misplaced mine I can't find it anywhere so let's just have a quick look at it so you'll know from the colour wheel you see it everywhere um, the reds, orange and yellows and probably some of the red violets as well. That is your warm side of the colour wheel. And then you have the cool side which includes your blues and greens. Now it doesn't really mean anything warm and cool except um, it's, it's the kind of effect that you want to give in your colouring. So if you want it to have a warmth, a vibrancy, a um, you know maybe in, if you were colouring sunsets or you know exotic flowers and things like that you probably want to stick to the warm side of the color wheel the cool side it gives off a little bit of a different vibe again i explain this much more in the other video video but um if you want something that's calmer more harmonious and more sort of um more chill and more pleasant if you know what i mean then you'd pick something from the cooler side but again you can mix mix and match it doesn't have to be one or the other although i would recommend if you're going to do it for the first time just try and stick to one side of the color wheel for your first palette just because it will keep it limited and cohesive and you're not chucking every single color of the rainbow onto your page which i'll also come on to later as well so with the colour wheel, you've got um, your reds going through to orange, yellow, green, blue um, and purple, basically. But obviously there are shades and, and differentiation of colour between all of those colours. So you'll get your red oranges, yellow oranges, yellow greens, blue greens, blue violets and red violets. So it's all um, the colours that are in between the main colours that we would use. So. You know, we don't always pick up a, a colouring page and automatically go, right, I'm colouring that yellow and that red and that blue. We think about the shades and the mid-tones uh, that we want to use, you know, just to just to mix it up a little bit, make it a bit more dynamic so that you're not always using primary colours, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, think about that when you're looking at your pages. You know, you want to use some different shades and tones. Coming on to shades and tones, again, explain better in the other video. Um, your your hue is the ring around the edge here and that is your solid colour so that's your red your red orange your orange and so on tints are where you add white to that solid colour so for example when you add white to um let's go with red you add white to red and you'll get a, a much softer um more desaturated colour so it will it will look very pastel like so if you look at this second ring around here these are all pastel shades so very light very desaturated um so if you're looking for maybe something that's a little bit more delicate i would choose tints of shades rather than uh, the full hues the tones if i'm if i'm remembering rightly the tones are where you add gray to the original colour so it just dulls it down a bit again it desaturates it a little bit um, and then the shades are I believe where you add black to the original colour so you've got very very dark colours here in this centre ring and it really has taken the vibrancy out of the original colour so these are all different things that you can think about so when you've got a colouring page in front of you it's completely blank you don't you don't know how to start it you don't know what colours to use consult this colour wheel and you need to make a few decisions first of all so first you've got to decide do you want it to be warm or cool or a mixture of both now it's great to have a mixture of both sometimes because as i'll show you in a minute when you've got your warm colors making up the whole of the page 
and then you've got extra elements that you think oh I don't know what to color those because it's gonna if I color it orange it'll get lost in all the orange then you can flip over to the other side of the color wheel and find a cool one that's going to really pop now I'll show you an example of that in my own work so if I bring this here I think I've got to zoom out a bit so bear with so this is an example of my work from the book Slavic Beauties and as you can see for the most part this is a warm colour scheme it's a warm the warm side of the colour wheel so most of it is orange uh, orangey red as you can see we've also got yellow and goldish tones around the edge and even the purple in the background is more like a red violet I don't know whether the camera is showing that up but it does gradiate from dark up to um, sort of a, a, a dark magenta-ish colour so that's all warm colours and then I was looking right how can I make the eyes stand out how can I make all of the trim of the headdress and the different elements here stand out from the orange because if I use any of the other colours that I've used on the page it's going to get lost if I use yellow that would have got lost so I thought let's have a look at the colour wheel and see what is on the opposite side to all of these colours and it's blue so orange and blue are opposites and that's why the blue really stands out against the orange and it's 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 just a really interesting choice to have to make um, but it's fun also looking at the looking at the colour wheel and seeing what is on the opposite side and what will actually contrast and uh, really make your pictures pop. So I'll zoom back in and we'll go back to the colour wheel. I'm zooming in because I've got something up on the top of this piece of paper that I don't want you to see just yet. Um, okay, so that's the first decision you have to make. Do you want it to be warm or do you want it to be cool? Do you want it to have bits of both? And if so, how can you make it so that it will really contrast? The next thing you want to think about is do you want it contrasting or harmonious? And what I mean by that is, do you want to be using the orange and the blue or the violet and the yellow or the red and the green to, to heighten that contrast? They're called complementary colours, but I just say contrasting colours. Um, do you want it to pop or do you want to use colours that are sat next to each other on the wheel and they're going to be, they're going to create a harmonious look and feel to your work? So, um, for example, if you were colouring... Um, some nature scene or something you might want to choose your greens and your blues for the sky and maybe a little bit of purple in the flowers here and there you know something that's not too contrasting and it's going to just go nicely together and it's going to be pleasing to the eye that's what that means so choose whether you want it to contrast or be harmonious now do you want it bright or dull that's the third thing you need to think about do you want to use these more inner shades of the colour wheel that have black and grey added so those deeper darker tones or do you want it to be really super bright and be like the outer ring of this colour wheel so really really saturated in the in the basic hue of the colour that's up to you um, also there's light and dark which is slightly different so do you want the page to have a moody feel or do you want it to be really bright and um, happy and it, again it just depends how you want that how you think the page makes you feel and how you want it to feel so even if you're doing a haunted house if you colored it in yellow and orange it's not going to look so haunted as it would if you colored it in these deep murky sort of dark tones of violet and you know dark greens and black and things like that so it depends on the mood of your piece as well um so when you figured out basically how you want to to plot out the the coloring page you need to choose some colors and this is the thing that people seem to struggle on how to choose colors that blend well and which pop so we've already explained that colors that are opposite on the wheel are contrasting or complementary and they will make each other pop when you put them on the page together um if you're going for something like a sunset that includes red and orange and yellow then you're only going to really need three pencils and I mean you can go as far as using your entire palette of dark red red orange red orange yellowed orange yellow you can go through loads of different pencils if you wanted to do that and create a longer blend but I like to use just three pencils if I can get away with it so if I was trying to do a sunset with three pencils I would choose um, a red orange to start off with 
because that's the closest we're going to get to our mid colour which is the orange and then I would choose a deeper yellow a more orangey yellow rather than a yellow green or something over here at this side of the colour wheel and that's going to make it super easy for you to do those transitions but if you have a larger area to colour say you've got a massive sky and you don't particularly want to use just three pencils because it's going to be a big block of one colour another block and another block um, you can use more pencils sort of incorporating the mid-tones of all of those so you might start off with a darker red and then move into a, a normal permanent red and then a red orange like a vermilion and then you go into your orange or yellow orange and then your yellows so really it depends on the size of area that you've got to play with as to how many pencils you choose um, but basically if you can try and get away with just three colors a light a medium and a dark so if you're wanting to blend or color a purple petal for example purple petal of a flower I would choose a dark purple a medium purple and a really really light purple so I would probably go from here to here and then end up with something really light like this so that's just for one color and as I say if you want to choose a blend that is incorporating more than one color you might need to use more pencils so say for example that you want to get from orange to blue you're obviously going to have to use quite a few different tones. You're going to have to use quite a few more than three pencils. And I'll show you an example of that. Now, this isn't finished yet, so just bear with. Um, this is from World of Flowers, and it's something I've been working on. As you can see, it's not complete. But I wanted to get from a really, really deep, dark purple, almost an indigo blue, actually, at the top there, right down to a very bright almost fluorescent yellow and obviously that's going to take more than three pencils to do that so if we look here you can see that i've started off with a really deep dark purple i've moved into the the magenta the red violets that blends really well with red red goes into orange as we know orange into yellow and that is how you create the blend so you're following that color wheel all the way around to get to the color you want to end up with so, you know, if you try and blend a blue and an orange straight away, you're just going to end up with a muddy brown colour. It's not going to work. You need to go through the steps um, of following the colour wheel and seeing which colours blend with each other. So it sounds really simple. And I know an awful lot of you will already know this information and it's very basic colour theory. Um, but there is an awful lot of people who genuinely just don't know about the colour wheel and, and about how colours match and blend together. So this is going to be really, really helpful for an awful lot of you out there, I hope. Um, it's something that I didn't really even think about until I was what, three years into colouring, maybe. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, the, the peacock that I've coloured on top of this is from the cooler side of the palette. So we've got all the warm colours in the background, this sunset-ish colour, and then we've got a cooler um, focal point in the middle, and that's what I was talking about earlier, about contrasting and adding in the warm and the cool together. Okay, so the next thing is, again, talking about the, uh, the colours that make each other pop. So as I've explained, it's the colours that are opposite to each other on the wheel. And if I just show you again some of my work, um, I keep zooming in and out, it must be really annoying. Uh, this is from uh, Scholl's Frander by Hannah Carlson. Now, as you can see, the whole of the background of this image is blue. It's a really vibrant blue. And as we know from the colour wheel, the opposite of blue is orange. So I knew that if I coloured all of my flowers in a really warm, orangey, um, also with a little bit of magenta in there as well but that kind of warm colour would really really pop against the blue now obviously if I'd have decided to colour these flowers in something like a <clears throat> um, a purple you know a blue violet or something like that it wasn't going to show up anywhere near as well as the contrasting of the orange has done so you just need to think about that really think about how do I make them pop right I have to look at the color wheel choose something that's opposite and again just keep it really limited you'll notice on this page that really I only have a few different colors I've got the blue of the background I've got the red orange of the flowers in the face and obviously there's some orange in these flowers as well and then I've got the green so really there's only three different color lots on this page and keeping it limited I find keeps it really cohesive it's not just chucking every single colour that you've got at the page and it just makes it more pleasing to the eye it makes it 
more interesting to look at and it ties it all in together as well. You'll notice whenever I've coloured um, a person, so if I'm colouring a portrait of a girl, I'll always tie her eyes and lips and hair and clothes in together. So you'll notice that her eyes might be the same colour as her dress and her lips might have the shade, same shade as her hair or something like that but I always try and tie in whatever colour I've already used, whatever colour I've started in, I'll tie it in in other areas of the page. So let me see if I've got anything that I can show you what I mean by that. Um, yeah, okay, so this is another one of Hannah's books. This is the newest one, uh, Midnight's Masquerading. And you will have seen this if you follow me on so so social media already. Um, but as you can see here again, we, we're really, really limited with the palette. Now I chose this because all of these triangles and circles that were on her clothing and the bow on her hair really reminded me of like a Saved by the Bell 90s pattern and I really wanted to sort of highlight that with the colours so sometimes choosing colours depends on the feeling that you get as soon as you look at the page and that's the feeling that I got from this so I went with it now as you can see again we've only got I think four colours on this so we've got the teal green in the background we've got the yellow the pink and then the copper now as you can see I've used the copper um, as a metal colour on um, this turning key and then I've also used the exact same blends on her hair I've used the same pink on her cheeks and lips as I've used on the bow and the circles and I've used the same teal on her eyes um, the background and the triangles as well now the yellow I put in there because it is that kind of 90s palette but it also contrasts really really well against the green if I'd have coloured this blue it wouldn't have contrasted as well. So thinking about opposite colours will make your um, your pages pop. Uh, again, with limited colour palettes, if I can just bring in another example. You'll see on here, this is from Mythomorphia by Kirby Rosans. Um, you can see that again, I've only used a very small amount of different colours. So we've got blue, gold, red, and a slight bit of green on the bottom. There's a few bits of purple dotted in and about, but not very much on the page. If you just glance in at this, you would notice the red, the gold, and the blue before everything else. And you know, again, I could have made, I could have left him gold and coloured, um, coloured all of his hair in green, and then coloured all of the smoke, smoke in purple, coloured the background in you know pink, and I could have chucked everything at it, but it wouldn't have had as much um, impact as it does when you really limit the colours, the amount of colours that you're using. And that's not to say that you, you have to limit the amount of pencils. As you can see, this gold has taken a lot of different pencils from browns and ochres right up to yellow. So it's not just one colour, but it plays on the eye as it is one colour, if that makes any sense. So it looks to the eye like we've got red, we've got gold, we've got blue. And that's kind of the, the effect that you're going for. Um, again, on limited colours, bring this one in. This is another of Kirby's books, it's Worlds Within Worlds, and you can see here that basically all I've used is blue, grey, and then an orange blend. So again, the eye will pick it up as just three different colours, and it will just have much more of a, a pleasing look. I don't know how to describe it other than that, but it's just a lot better than shoving the entire rainbow at it, if that makes sense. So yeah, as you can see, we've got blue for the scales, um, we've got grey for all of the little spines and um, I don't even know what you'd call those little spikes but the grey and the blue that I've used on his skin and the spikes are also color the same colours as the building in the eye so again it's incorporating everything in it's using the same colours on different areas of the page to tie it all together do I have any more I don't think I have any other um, Thing, things to show you, examples to show you. But that is how I would start off with choosing your colours, deciding what makes it pop or deciding if you don't want it to pop and you want it to be really harmonious and, you know, stick to the same, the same three bits of the colour wheel. Now, there's another thing that makes your colouring pop and that's what I've been hiding from you all of this time and that is uh, adding white or leaving white rather in your um, colouring pages. So this is a really good example of what I mean by leaving white and how it makes it pop. So this one here, I've coloured with one pencil, with one red pencil, permanent red from the Prismacolors. It's just been completely flatly coloured, block coloured, and there's nothing else done to it. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. 
but we're looking at how to make things more dynamic and make it pop. So this one here, I've added a darker red to it. So this is two pencils now. I did have the pencils out, but I've put them away. Um, so we've got the permanent red that we used in the first flower, and then we've got a darker red, I think it was Crimson Lake, um, used on the tips and on the inside of the flower. And I haven't left any white in the middle, I've just completely block coloured it again. But just having the variation of two shades looks like totally different than just block colouring it in. Now moving to the third step with three pencils. Now I, I told you I like to do three colour blends if possible, a light, a medium and a dark. So again we've got the, the deeper crimson lake, then we've got the permanent red, but in the middle I've put an orange in there. And again you can see how much more dynamic that one looks. I'm hoping that I'm not a... Uh, let me just tilt it this way because it might be reflecting the wax in my light. Um, but you can see how much more dynamic that looks just to have the three colours instead of the two or the one. Now, check this out. This is what this is how I would normally colour a flower. So when you see my pages and you say, how do you make it pop like that? How does it look so, you know, so like the petals are curved and it's got all that, all the different ranges of tone and things like that. Well, this is how I do it. I've done exactly the same as I did on the third flower, but instead of colouring the entire section of the middle orange, I've sort of feathered the orange into the centre and left an area of white. So you'll see on the, the video that I'm inserting into this how I did that. Um, it's really, really simple. You basically just, instead of colouring it all in, just leave a little section of white, but try and flick your strokes so they look quite jagged. That gives you the texture. Okay, so you don't want it to look like um, a complete line straight across, a line of white. I mean, you can do that, but I quite like to leave it where the texture is showing and it looks a bit jagged and a bit rough. Now, leaving white will give you your highlights on your page. So that is where the light hits the object. And I've tried to make it look as if the petals are curved like this. I think it's um, convex. So it looks as if the light is hitting the centre of the petals and then it goes darker towards the tips and darker towards the centre, which is further away from you. It's it's like this. It's making it look like this. I'm very difficult. I'm very, it's very difficult to explain. Um, or maybe it would be easier for someone um, that will know, knows what they're talking about. But hopefully you're getting what I'm saying. Um, and when you're leaving white, the other trick that you can do to really, really make your page pop and your, your, your piece pop is to add some black or as close to black as you can get it in the opposite areas of the flower. So let me show you what I mean. So as you can see, I've left that white that we just talked about, but if I'd have just kept it as the darkest area being this red, this dark crimson lake red, it would not have had as much impact had I not added this black because black is as far as you can get from white and it's just really about maximizing the contrast between light and dark and that is what makes it pop i know i keep using that word i need to think of another word it makes it more striking it makes it intense it catches the eye so anywhere on your piece that you're coloring if you've got your highlights sorted and you've left your white and everything looks great but you really want to maximize it you really want to make it stand out try and make your darkest areas as close to black as possible. You don't have to use black. If you can get a really, really, really dark red that really contrasts with the orange and white, that's totally fine. But the closer you can get it to black, the more contrast you will have and the more it will pop. So people always ask me, why do you leave white? What's the benefit of doing that? Leaving white gives you your highlights, adding in black wherever you can or as dark as you can get to black, maybe layer some greys over it. Doing that will oppose that white so that you will get the opposite, um, the opposites working against each other, but it will work for you, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so yeah, I really hope that this video has helped um, answer some of those questions about how to choose colours and how to create that striking look. You know, you look on Instagram and you see all these amazing colourists and you think, how have they made it look like that? How have they... How is it so intense and, um, you know, whatever. And that is basically the secret of it. It's upping the contrast as much as possible. And that is exactly what I've done here. So I've coloured each flower in exactly the same manner, but I've added a pencil each time and I've left white in the, in the last one and that's it. So 
Um, I did put out a post on socials yesterday or the day before asking for your questions about how to choose colours. Um, I did get a lot of replies, but a lot of you, uh, I think I probably phrased it wrong, the question, because I was getting a lot of replies like, can you do tutorials for how to colour um, tree bark and things like that. I really didn't want this video to turn into a how to colour something. This is more about the process of how you choose your colours, how you find out which colours blend. Um, as I say, the colour wheel really is your best friend if you're a beginner with this. I pretty much have the colour wheel memorised because I've been doing it for so long and I colour all the time. Um, and I know automatically what colours, specific, specifically Prismacolors because I use them all the time. So I can tell you exact exact shades of Prismacolor that will match pretty much any colour. Um, but that comes with time, it comes with practice. You know, I've used my Prismacolors down to the nub many times and, and re, you know, re-bought them many times. I've used them that much that I know all the colours. And you, it can only come with time and practice, really. But hopefully, I've sort of given you an idea of my process and how to use the colour wheel to its best effect. Again, please watch my other video, Understanding the Colour Wheel. I did write myself a little script for that one, so it's not as long and rambly as this. <laughs> this is literally off the cuff. Um... But yeah, if there's any questions that I haven't answered and you want to ask me in the comments below, please feel free to do that. If there are any tutorials that you are wanting, like, you know, colouring tree bark, whatever, um, I'll definitely, definitely do those in future videos. But I, as I say, I wanted this to be about the process of choosing colours because um, it seems to be what a lot of you are struggling with. Also, if you want to look at colour palettes on Pinterest or, you know, on Google Images, type in colour palettes, autumn colour palettes, pretty much any keyword you can think of, you know, uh, you'll get a colour palette for it and you can pick your colours from there. So if you really are struggling with choosing, just have a look at pre-made palettes. But again, it's all about what the illustration says to you, if that if that makes sense. I've said if that makes sense about 20 times in this video, I really, I'm really aware of it. But just looking back through some of my other, my other images, I'm just trying to see, um, you know, what feel that I got for this. I mean, with this, it's quite self-explanatory. It's really exotic. And so straight away, I was like reds, pinks, oranges, and then to contrast, you know, the beautiful teal of the leaves. But um, let's have a look. Say if I was going to colour, let's see. See, this is another dragon similar to the one that I showed you. And I'd, I'd again, I was going with those kind of Chinese dragon colours of red and gold and blue. But really, you, could, you can just do anything you want. It depends how it looks to you. It's very, very difficult to explain, and I did um and ah for a while about doing this video because I thought, I'm just going to be saying a load of gobbledygook that people don't really understand. But hopefully you've you've caught on to my wavelength and you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, no more jabbering. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the video, if it has helped you. Um, again, if there are any other questions about the process of choosing colours, let me know. And um, I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.